let's check out some. Uh, am I going to read some stories? No. You know what I'm actually going to do? I actually came across this thing. It says news is bad for you. Okay, this is from something the Guardian dot com says news is bad for you and giving up reading it will make you happier. All right. Now, I'll tell you right now, I didn't need this article to tell me this. I just realized it. I figured it out after I went down a rabbit hole of, uh, you know, conspiracy theory. You guys remember that people listened to the podcast 10 years ago. I mean, I, you know, I was Mr. You know, chemtrail guy, you know. I was that guy saying you got to shut down the Federal Reserve and I had no solution to do like what would what you would do after that. You know, I'm sure people that are well read on it had the solution, but I didn't. So I was just walking around freaking people out. Um, so anyways, it says news is bad for your house. So I just stopped watching. All right. I'm just banking on the fact that there's going to be some smart people with a good heart that that are, that are going to lead us out of this fucking mess because I don't have any solutions, all right? I go on stage, I jump around like a monkey, and I make you laugh, okay? That's my lane. And as The Rock used to say, know your role and shut your mouth. So I'm staying over there. I try to watch the news. I, I, I try, I can't, you know, it's the weirdest thing. Going from Obama to Trump. Going from Obama where all they did was lick his balls for eight years, and then they go to Trump and, and, it, and it's just like all they do is shit on the guy the entire fucking time. And they're both kind of doing, you know, with the foreign policy, the same fucking shit. Although I don't, Trump is like a fucking lunatic. You know what I mean? I, you know, I heard, I was listening to the Howard Stern show and he went on this fucking rant about Russia. It, it was just not talking about the fucking people, just talking about, you know, uh, old Vladdy Daddy over there. He goes, I'm sick of people fucking talking about Russia. You know, like, like they're not that bad. He's like, they, they, they fucking, you know, they kill gay people. They, they kill reporters just for having a difference of opinion. And, and, they, and he's right. He's fucking right. Um, I don't know. I, I, once that his, his, his fucking wife wore that coat. When he was going to go visit those kids that, that she was going to go visit those kids that they had stuck in cages and she wore a jacket that said, I don't really care to you. And then tried, oh, that had to do with fake news. It's just like it's literally like listening to a toddler lie. And I God bless you. If you can still watch that and try and stay politically active, because I don't know, it, it's it's just too fucking depressing. I, I can't fucking deal with it. So I choose not to watch. And the last presidency, you know, I just, I just, it was, I, I couldn't fucking, you know, I had hope. And then I was just like, oh, oh, this is going to be more of the same. Oh, bankers don't go to jail. Oh, yeah. If, yeah. Insurance companies could do whatever, whatever they fucking want. And uh, yeah, we're not going to constructively criticize our foreign policy. And we're just going to stay the fucking course and shut down the government every fucking August for a week. And our solution is always going to be the same. Well, what if we raise the debt? Right. You know, and then meanwhile, everything that his wife did was just considered like angelic. And it's just it, it, the whole fucking thing was annoying. That was like when he was in office, it was like watching a fucking award show. Everybody's just walking around blowing each other, talking about how fucking brilliant they are. And then this we went from an award show to a fucking train wreck. I honestly don't know how people have the stomach to pay attention. Like you're you're a whole other level tough mentally than I am. So anyways, here's, here's this whole fucking article here. It says, news is bad for you, and giving up reading it will make you happier. All right, in the past few decades, the fortune, fortunate among us have recognized the hazards of living with an overabundance of food, parentheses, obesity, and diabetes, and having started to change, and have started to change our diets. But most of us do not yet understand that news is to the mind what sugar is to the body. News is easy to digest. The media feeds us small bites of trivial matter, tidbits that don't really concern our lives and don't require thinking. That's why we experience almost no saturation. Unlike reading a book or long magazine articles which require thinking, we can swallow limitless quantities of news flashes, which are bright colored candies for the mind. Today we have reached the same point 
in relation to the to information that we faced 20 years ago in regard to food, we're beginning to recognize how toxic news can be. And I agree with all of this, but everybody can't stop paying attention or else, you know, somebody has to pay attention, right? Somebody's got to be like, you know, you just can't put it on cruise control. So I don't know if I 100% agree with this. I just know I'm not going to be the Gandhi that leads us out of this. You know, so as long as I know that, I mean, I will just can be content to listen to Howard in the morning and then I listen to fucking baseball at night. <laughs> That's what the fuck I do. I don't pretend to know things. All right, news misleads. Oh my God, what? Take the following event. A car drives over a bridge and the bridge collapses. What is, what is the news media focus on? The car, the person in the car, where he came from, where he planned to go. How he, was he transitioning? How, they didn't say that. How he experienced the crash, parentheses, if he survived. But that is all irrelevant. What's relevant? The structural stability of the bridge. That's the underlying risk that has been lurking and could lurk in other bridges. Oh, they get to that after they go painstakingly through the horror of the end of that man's life or life-altering injuries, and then they get to his family and they're all crying and all of that shit. Um, you know, as much as a moron as, as I am, I always turn that shit off. You know, like out here, we had a hostage situation at a Trader Joe's, and um, the people I was with were just watching it and watching and watching it. It's like, like, these people in the store are fucking terrified. This is the worst fucking moment of their life. All right? The news eventually is going to tell you what happened and they're going to give you an edited version so you don't have to see people's brains getting blown out. You know, and why, you know, they literally had like the employees were crying and all that shit. And then I found out in the end, you know, some poor woman died. It was, it was it's fucking terrible. And I'm just going to sit at home watching it for hours, ordering food, you know, going online. Are they tweeting from there or what's going on? And, then all these fucking assholes on YouTube, uh, not YouTube, on Twitter, all these social media people are going to go on and say the obvious. Oh, my God, this is so sad. I'm, like, freaking out right now. I love that. Oh, is that what you're doing? Are you freaking out in the safety of your own home? Why don't you make this about yourself, you fuck? Oh, Jesus. Social media, I bet, is people, there's a lot of shit that says that's depressing, too. But you know what? Podcasts actually feed the soul. <laughs> I believe I'm part of the problem. News misleads. Bill Burr misleads. Uh, anyways, plowing ahead. We are not rational enough to be exposed to the press. See, this guy's saying we're all dumb. Watching an airplane crash on television is going to change your attitude toward that risk, regardless of its real probability. If you think you can compensate with the strength of your own inner con- contemplation, you are wrong. I think the subtext of this is, you dumb fuck. Bankers and economists who have powerful incentives to compensate for newsborne hazards have shown that they cannot. The only solution, cut yourself off from the news consumption entirely. News is irrelevant. Out of the approximately 10,000 news stories you have read in the last 12 months, name one that because you consumed it allowed you to make a better decision about a serious matter affecting your life, your career, and your business. Well, I would say anything about the environment. You know, geez, this this guy's chip off the old block here, paint with a broad brush. The point is, the consumption of news is irrelevant to you, but people find it very difficult to recognize what's relevant. It's much easier to recognize what's new. All right, I think we get the point here. News has no explanatory power. News items are bubbles popping on the surface of a deeper world. Ooh, that's deep. That sounds like a fucking progressive rock band, like a line in the song. Um, in 7-4, I imagine, will accumulate facts that help you understand the world. Uh, sadly, no. The relationship is inverted. The important stories are non-stories. I would agree with that. Slow, powerful movement that develop below journalist radar but have a transforming effect. The more news factoids you digest, the less of the big picture you will understand. Well, maybe that's why everybody's yelling at each other. News is toxic to your body. This, I'll just read the headlines here. News increases cognitive errors. News inhibits thinking. News works like a drug. News wastes time. News makes us passive. Well, that worked with me. News kills creativity. Um, Well, there you go. Jesus Christ, that's pretty fucking negative, huh? Let's get to some positive shit. 
I got a, I got a fucking note from uh, possible visit to Dubrovnik, Rovnik, Dubrovnik, Croatia. My friend, 